Welcome to Jesus Changes Everything, a daily podcast dedicated to providing a fresh look at the ancient and glorious truth that Jesus not only reigns, but is busy about the business of bringing all things under subjection, that celebrates the wonder and the glory that he has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. I don't think he thought of it as storytelling, but I listened like I was listening to stories when my father used to tell me things. There were times when he would get excited to share something uh, with me personally. We'd be driving in the car somewhere and he'd start to tell me something and he would get excited and, and I would just be enthralled with the story that he was telling. And one of those stories uh, has stuck with me through the years. And that was when he told me about uh, Francis Gary Powers and the U-2 spy plane uh, that was shot down over Russia when he was young. Uh, you may not be familiar with that story, but uh, the United States had developed this U-2 spy plane that they believed uh, could fly uh, in an altitude so high that the Soviet Union's uh, anti-aircraft uh, batteries could not reach it. They thought that it was uh, untouchable, so to speak. This was the uh, the common spy plane immediately prior to the SR-71 Blackbird. Well, uh, when Khrushchev was ruling there in the Soviet Union uh, and Francis uh, Powers went down, uh, there was the assumption in the government that uh, he must have gone into the water or something, but that there would be no way for the plane to be in any way, shape, or form intact. And when Khrushchev announced to the world that they had successfully shot down an American spy plane and that they were holding the pilot, uh, Eisenhower went on national television and denied it. So confident was he that it could, that he couldn't have survived, that the plane couldn't have survived, that they, he couldn't have even been shot down by the Russian artillery, uh, that Eisenhower very publicly denied it. And then Khrushchev very publicly brought Gary Powers out alive on television. Now, when you're a kid, uh, stories of spies and spy planes and that kind of stuff is uh, uh, very compelling and engaging. But what I remember most about hearing that story was the pain in my dad's voice, his describing the 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 that watershed moment in his own life and what he believed was really a watershed moment in the life of the nation when everyone came to understand that the government, the federal government, was more than willing to lie to the American people. He had, and he suspected that most Americans had a naive perspective prior to this, a perspective that suggested that, this, that surely the government would never lie to us. Well, I mention all that because <laughs> how far we've come. You've heard the old quip, how do you know a politician's lying? And the answer is his lips are moving. And now we are in the midst of some of the most intense misinformation uh, in the history of the world. I'm thinking about any number of different uh, ways or, or, or illustrations of this reality. Uh, r relatively recently, President Biden, in trying to drum up support for uh, what he dishonestly calls the Voting Rights Act, uh, which is really a federal uh, power grab into a state's issue on how what the requirements are for voting, etc. Uh, he described this as Jim Crow 2.0. He suggested that those who won't support this bill are uh, racists and demagogues and Bull Connor uh, kind of characters. 
His rhetoric was so over the top, so intense that even uh, leaders in his own party distanced themselves from it and said, you know, Joe, uh, this is over the top. Now, of course, obviously, this was a speech written by someone else, but approved by the president and delivered by the president. So he was held accountable. Well, that's one of those examples. The other thing is, is just the constant flip-flopping and back and forth from the CDC, the HWO, from Dr. Fauci, all, I mean, you want to know, you want a recipe for creating uncertainty, for fomenting conspiracy theories. Here's what you do. You have people say, these paper masks help. And then you shut down and create and essentially blacklist or, or uh, censor uh, those who say, mm, no, I don't think they're any very helpful at all. And then later on, you turn around and say, yeah, they were never helpful. The president himself went on national television and told the nation that if they would take the vaccine, that there would be no, that no one else, that you couldn't get COVID. Get the vaccine, he said, you won't get COVID. Now, how many people have gotten the vaccine and have gotten COVID? I don't know the number. I know it's incredibly high. Just recently, we learned as well that uh, uh, those who have had COVID have developed a natural immunity that is more powerful in combating future variants than the vaccine. Again, simple, basic, common, ordinary science that was being spoken a year ago by doctors and researchers, and that was being shouted down by the establishment saying, no, 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 no. And then, lo and behold, not only is it true, but it was true all along. Those are just some examples. Uh, you know, I'm not here today to argue about vaccine effectiveness, whether we should get the vaccine, really anything about COVID. I'm just trying to get us to understand that we have reached a stage. And, and honestly, friends, I, I think this comes right out of uh, postmodernism. When you take the view that there's no such thing as truth, then you not only give yourself license to lie, but you deny the possibility that anything could ever be called a lie. It was Joe Biden himself back when he was still a senator and when he was the chairman of the House, or excuse me, the Senate Judicial Committee, when he was presiding over the hearings regarding the confirmation of Clarence Thomas to the Supreme Court and Anita Hill is there testifying against Clarence Thomas and accusing him of sexual harassment. This was way back. Joe came out and Someone asked, well, what do you think? He said, well, I think they're both telling the truth. Really? One is saying, I did not sexually harass that woman. Another is saying, that man sexually harassed me. How possibly could they both be telling the truth? Well, they can't. If there is no truth, you can't tell the truth. If there is no truth, you can't lie. If language is nothing other than an attempt to maintain and wield and grow power, then everything that the people say who believe that is an attempt to maintain and to wield and to grow power. It is a strange thing indeed for people to take the position that there's no such thing as truth. We've talked about it a hundred times on this podcast. You know how uh, silly 
and self-referentially absurd this notion is, how easy it is to refute it. We simply say, is it true that there's no such thing as truth? Well, what are you left with? You can say yes, in which case you're saying something's true, that there's no truth. Or you can say no, in which case you're denying your premise. It doesn't work. It doesn't add up. But what it does is it reveals the disingenuineness of those who believe it. It reveals the ah, willingness, in fact, the eagerness to lie. Now, friends, I want you to keep in mind uh, we're talking about the president of the United States here. We're talking about the fellow who's in office right now. I am not here to suggest that this is strictly a problem for Democrats, not by any stretch of the imagination. This is a evil that infests both sides of the aisle and that infests both sides of the audience. We are not going to make any progress in protecting, defending, and expanding our liberty until we learn to value, to believe in, to listen for, to speak truth. Think about this. We hold these truths to be self-evident. If there are no truths, then these truths are not truths. That all men are created equal. That they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. Do you see what you lose? This is all, this, this whole postmodern game is nothing more than an attempt to escape the law of God. And what you get when you embrace it is absolute raw tyranny. So if you love freedom, then you're going to have to love truth. If you want honesty and integrity from Washington, you're going to have to demand it and stop trying to get your liar to beat their liar. You're going to have to be willing to have your man of integrity lose to their liar. Just to be sure that your guy isn't a liar. I want you to cultivate a deeper sense of skepticism about what you hear from politicians on all sides. I don't want you to develop a spirit of skepticism about the truth of God's word or the truth that God reveals in the created order. He is truth and he's absolutely trustworthy. And that's where we place our trust not in princes, not in presidents, but in the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You've been listening to the Jesus Changes Everything podcast, a production of Dunamis Fellowship, the teaching outreach of Dr. R.C. Sproul Jr. If you've enjoyed this podcast, we encourage you to subscribe which you can do at all the usual outlets to tell your friends and to spread the word. To learn more about the work of Dunamis Fellowship, please visit rcsportjr.com and join us next time on Jesus Changes Everything.